All right, everybody relax. It's just a little storm. Nothing to worry about. Just a little breeze and some moisture in the air. Whew. Somebody tie down the cannon before it blows off. All right, I think we're almost through this storm. Another couple of days and we should be in the clear. Let me take care of that guy. He doesn't look too good. All right, welcome to the captain's cabin. Uh, we're on a little bit of a storm, and so our boat is a little bit shaky, and everybody's a little bit on edge, but uh, we're going to be fine. We're going to make it through the storm. We always do. What we know, though, is that the sea is not calm. That means our boat is in a sea that is rocking and waving and just going crazy, which means our little boat is not calm, which means our crew that's on our boat that's in the sea, they're not calm either. It's a hard thing to be on a ship in a storm on the sea. But what we're looking for is the ability to be calm. That's a quality that we see in God and when Jesus through the Bible and it's a quality that we can emulate when we trust in God. So we're going to look at a verse in our big Bible. That's right. Today's verse actually is something that Jesus said. It's recorded in John chapter 14, verse 1, and it says this. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. John 14, 1. Let me say that again. Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. John 14, 1. You see, calm doesn't just have to mean the sea being still or our boat not rocking back and forth. Calmness is also what we have when we're at peace with things. We have patience and we're not so upset and not angry. In fact, that's what calmness is. It's the absence of anger. It's the absence of violence. It's the absence of upsetness. It's calmness. So that's what we're looking for today, especially on a boat in a storm. as we look at the idea of being calm, I think the story of Jesus calming the storm uh, is a great story that gives us some great examples. Uh, there's lots of different levels of calmness in that story, uh, and so let's just jump into it. Uh, it begins with Jesus spending the day teaching and healing and like he, ha like he did, um, and he instructed his uh, disciples, well, he said, let's get in a boat and let's go over on the other side of this, this lake, the sea. Um, and here's what it says. It's going to start in Mark chapter 4, verse 35. It says, That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, a storm, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? He got up and he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the waves died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. And then when I look at this story, we see a... We see a couple of things going on. The first thing we realize is Jesus is tired. And so he lays down on a cushion in the boat. He goes to sleep. He is a picture of calmness. But all around him is chaos, is craziness. As the storm rages on, 
And these guys who are sailors are so afraid. It's a, it's a bad storm if they're afraid because they've grown up on the water, a lot of them. And so they're, they're panicking. And so finally they look down and they see Jesus is sleeping and they go and they wake him up and they say, don't you even care if we drowned? And he stands up and he calms the storm and he calms the waves and he calms his disciples for a little bit. Uh, as soon as they see what he's done, now they're terrified of him because they, they can't believe how much power this man has. It's like, then Swass, who is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? And they weren't afraid of him, but they realized how much power he had. And that was frightening. But do you see how God, Jesus, in one instance, was able to calm the chaos in their life? They still went through the storm, uh, but he was able to bring calmness to them. You know, we see, uh, we see a lot of things throughout the Bible, uh, especially in the Old Testament. You look in Psalms and even Zechariah, it talks about how God is a God who calms the storm, who calms the waves, who calms the sea. Uh, our God is a God who recognizes the value in being calm and peacefulness. Okay, there is a rest that we have in in God when we recognize the calmness that He provides. There are verses that talk about giving your, your anxieties, your worries to God. He wants you to have that peace, that calmness in your life. And we see that in this story, how Jesus took even the storm that, that is out of our control and was able to bring calmness to the chaos. You know what? He can do that to us too. You know, when we give our worries to Him, you know, our worries of school and our worries of, you know, being around people that we don't know and our worries about all the things that are going on around in our world right now and sicknesses and things. If we give him our worries, he can bring peace. He can bring calmness to our lives. And that is a great thing. And we see that in the story of Jesus calming the sea. Come on, you! Charge! The pineapple didn't work. The banana didn't work. Gibby, the coconut is not gonna work either. You're just gonna have to accept the fact you can't charge a game using a fruit. I will play video games again if it's the last thing I do. Those are some mighty great goals. You know, if you put that brain of yours to work trying to get us off this island, you can charge your video game all you want. You're right. Why didn't I think of that? Where are you going? I'm going to build a boat to get us off this island. You don't know how to build a boat. Sure I do. I do it all the time in Minecraft. How hard could it be? Oh, Gibby. Should I be worried that Gibby just ran past me babbling about needing a knife? Nah. I convinced him to put his energy toward getting home, rather than charging his game. Now he's decided to build a boat. Uh, the old focus on getting home instead of a video game trick. I should have done that myself. We're doomed. I guess it's up to me to build a signal fire. Maybe I'll flag down a ship or an airplane with it. Gibby! I need that knife! You know, we see all throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, God is the God that brings calmness. Throughout the Old Testament, in Psalms and different places, it talks about how God calms the storm. In fact, Psalms 107, 29 says, He calmed the storm and its waves quieted down. Or better yet, Zechariah 10, 11 says, The Lord will cross the sea of storms and will calm its turbulence. God is a calm God who brings calmness to His people. We see that throughout the, the New Testament. God calls us to be people of self-control and peace and patience. Those all have a level of calmness to them. Um, but it's interesting that God uses storms and waves a lot in the, in the Bible. And uh, so anytime I have a chance to play with water, 
kind of makes me think of different stories in the Bible. Um, but especially when Jesus calmed that crazy storm, you know, that water went from place to place to place. And his, his disciples, they were scared and they were afraid. But when he stood up and he called out to the waves and the the waves calm down and the, the storm quieted down and the there was no more storm there was no more fear there was no more craziness because our God was a God of calmness and we see Jesus having control over the elements the storms and the winds and the waves and just like that there was peace that's what God wants for us. He wants us to be people of self-control and calmness. Your challenge for next week is going to be calmness. Find a picture, shoot a video of calmness. It can be about you. It can be about something that you see around you. Uh, it could be something that you draw, create. Create something about calmness and give it to us, and we'll put it in our video. Next week is our last C as we explore the seven C's. Um, so we'll be finishing up this series and we'll be starting a brand new one uh, the following week. And so I hope that you will continue to be with us. And we're going to close in prayer and then uh, the day is yours. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for all that you do. We thank you for the love that you have for us and the desire that you have for us to be people that are people of peace and patience and calmness, Lord. And we, and we see the storm around us and we know that you can calm that storm or you can lead us through that storm. Uh, but we know that you are always there with us, and we say thank you. Thank you for being our God. Lord, we thank you for the day. We pray for your continued blessings on all, so, all those that are, are sick and in need. We thank you so much for Jesus, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. All right, have a great day.